with uh, Dr. Ron Paul. And uh, Dr. Paul, you've built a uh, international following as well, and I'm one of them, being out of Oslo, Norway. And would you say that the fight for liberty, is that a global fight or is that an American fight? And w w what is your take on that? Well, I have found out in this last year or so that it's more global than I realized, and that was a very pleasant surprise because we did get a lot of responses from around the world. Uh, we actually had meetup groups form in the various countries, more than I had known about. So I think there's a solid base around the world of individuals who know about and understand the concept of individual freedom over and above what the state does to us, you know. And, and of course, this battle has been going on a long time, but it was thought at one time that America was the champion of individual liberty. Lately, though, we haven't been doing a very good job, but because of the Internet and the ability of information to spread around the world, this is a worldwide phenomenon of the number of people who are becoming interested. I found in this, our campaign that maybe there was a base of about 15 percent who really understood and loved this message. I have no idea what it is around the world, but I know I've had a lot of invitations, especially in Eastern Europe. I've had some various invitations to come over and visit, and, of course, uh, even in, in, in Asia and Australia and different places. So it's very encouraging uh, that uh, this message is being spread, and we desperately need uh, these answers. Because I think uh, we've had an adequate trial of big government throughout all of history, and it always fails. So it's, it's great that this message is being spread. Well, that's wonderful. Now, you have been working within the U.S. framework, an institutional framework, of course. But it, would you say that it's possible to build liberty even within other frameworks in other countries? Is, uh, or, or is the U.S. sort of framework better rigged for liberty than other frameworks? Of course, we've had traditions, and we brag about it, and sometimes we talk to more about what we have here and criticize others, but uh, I think right now we're on shaky grounds. I think we have had the traditions, and it's available to us, but I don't think that uh, means that uh, it's, uh, the field is more fertile here. It might be argued that uh, other countries who have suffered more might be more open to these views. Yes, they've had the true test, and... Uh, They've been less prosperous, and they think that they need something new. Our country has become lax because we have become so pros prosperous, and we've gotten away with it. And prosperity sort of diminishes the desire to be free because freedom produces the prosperity. But if you remain prosperous, some people get to the notion where you might have not have to work. And I keep arguing right now that if this bailing out of our economic system requires only the printing of more money and running up debt, I said, just think, we would never have to work again, but it doesn't work that way. And so I would think that other countries, if, when they come to this realization, uh, they will be able to uh, participate probably as well, if not better than we do here in America. And lastly, if you are an individual somewhere in the world, in China, in Europe, in France, in Africa, and you want to fight for liberty, would you go into politics or how, how would you work if you are that individual? The individual first has to be well informed. He has to study free market economics. He has to understand why the government is uh, just mischief, why market pricing is so important that when central banks interfere with interest rates, they're, they're making problems for everybody. So educating oneself is the most important thing. And then uh, educating your family and your friends and your neighbors, protecting yourself, and then learning how to be responsible for oneself, never depending on the government. But then there'll be more opportunities, depending on what country it is or where you are, whether a person should be involved in politics. But politics should be secondary to understanding the message. And the message is very clear. It's well written. We understand it better now than we have ever in the history of mankind. And the 20th century, though it became a socialist, uh, warmongering world, uh, actually the ideas of liberty have been well developed through the Austrian School of Economics. Thank you, Dr. Paul. Right. You're welcome. Thanks.